OpenAI has just released a new feature to the ChatGPT desktop app that allows you to access the context of VS Code, Xcode Terminal, as well as iTerm2. I'm going to play the video from this tweet, and then once that's done, I'm going to be showing you the steps in terms of setting this up, and then showing you a quick demonstration in terms of my experience and my thoughts on it as well. Hi, I'm Romain from OpenAI. Today, I want to show you a quick look at an early feature in the ChatGPT app for macOS, the ability to work directly with the applications on your computer. So imagine I'm building an iPhone app, and I have my Xcode project open here. Previously, I would have had to copy my code back and forth from Xcode into ChatGPT. Well, now with this new integration that I enabled, I can click the Xcode button here, and ChatGPT can immediately see the Swift code I'm working on. Check out this example. So OpenAI 01 first created this entire app from scratch to track the ISS and astronauts in space in real time. But say I want to add a new feature to this app. I can simply write, add, a new screen in the center with the live stream. Now, ChatGPT has the context about my existing Swift code and starts suggesting the changes. That's done, so I can just jump back in and update the code. Let's build the app. Let's command R. Great. It's pretty cool. The live stream is right there with even a fancy icon for it. And I could keep on going and adding new features, but for now, let's ship this update. I'm going to switch to the terminal. And I'm going to now ask ChatGPT to work with my terminal. I'm going to tell ChatGPT to help me push this on GitHub. Now, given that ChatGPT has the context of the two apps, Xcode and the terminal, ChatGPT can help write commit messages based on the work we've just done. It can also help troubleshoot errors if you have any or install missing dependencies based on anything it sees in your terminal output. And that's it. ChatGPT helped me iterate on this app. It's like having a pair programmer by your side and you're ready to ship this update. We're always working on additional ways to make ChatGPT more useful for developers. Personally, I would love, for instance, for ChatGPT to go even further, showing me the diffs, writing the files, or potentially letting me talk out loud the features I'd like to add. And these are things we'll continue to explore. We hope you find this update useful and stay tuned for more. I think the key piece with what he mentioned at the end there was this right now is for reading the context effectively. There isn't the ability to action things right now, like writing to files or executing commands within the terminal, that's something that is very likely coming. Now, in terms of getting set up, the main piece that you will need if you're gonna be using VS Code is you'll have to download this extension. I'll put the link to this within the description of the video. And then to install it, you can just open up your command palette, command shift P, and then you just type in VS IX and you select this option of extensions to install. Once you have that, I'm just going to open up VS Code as well as iTerm and the ChatGPT app. Let's open up a brand new tab here and let's just clear out our project and set up a couple quick examples. Within the app, there's this new icon where it will show all of the apps that are supported that you have installed. In my case, I have VS Code installed, I have iTerm 2 installed, and then it also has the default text edit as well as the terminal that's built into the Mac OS. As soon as you select one, you will be prompted to just enable ChatGPT to be able to access this from your security preferences. You have to enable that at first. And the thing with this is you can actually have multiple things within here. So let's say you want to have code, iTerm2, maybe even you want to have a text edit file. You could do all three within here. So it can see the context of what's within my file. Now, I have this example.ts file. If I were to ask a question about this and I say, what is in the example.ts file? And I ask that question. Here we see they don't have the visibility into that. Now, that's just something to be mindful of. Now, if I say something like start hello.ts in the bun runtime and I run that, you'll see it will give you the command of how to run this, but it's not going to be able to execute anything. But if I just go ahead and run this, now where this can potentially be helpful though is, let's say it's a larger application or a smaller application, doesn't really matter, and you go and you try and run that, and let's run it again with a deliberate error, and I just say what is the error. Then based on the context of what it sees within the terminal, it gives me the fix that I can put within this file. All in all, I think right now what's interesting with this is more where it's going, not necessarily where it is right now. I think I personally am still going to be using other tools and other approaches. This probably isn't going to be a flow that I will be using, but as soon as they have the voice capability and the ability to read and write to both the terminal as well as VS Code, that's going to be something a lot more compelling. Right now, being able to not have to copy and paste the context 
that is definitely nice. And being able to access the context of multiple things locally on your machine, very nice. But I'm not sure with this beta version how wide the adoption will necessarily be. You don't have to copy and paste in the context. You still have to copy and replace the contact. But I think once they figure out the ability to write within the programs, execute commands within the terminal, and also use the voice feature, that's going to be definitely a lot more compelling. And I look forward to when that is finally available. But otherwise, I just wanted to do a quick one. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.